Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today, we're going to be talking about why brain wallets are a very bad idea. So we're going to talk about what a brain wallet is and why you definitely should not use one. So first, let's talk a little bit about what a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency wallet actually is. What a wallet really is, is a collection of private keys. So Bitcoin operates using a public key cryptography system, and that's specifically uh, elliptic curve cryptography, if you're interested in that sort of thing. So whenever you generate a Bitcoin wallet, what your wallet does is it actually generates a cryptographically secure random numbers to use as your private keys. And those are 256 bit keys, meaning that your private key can actually be any number from zero to two to the 256 power minus one. Now, this is a really enormous key space. So two to the 256 power is an unfathomably large number. And this kind of comes into play later on when we talk about wallet security and why brain wallets aren't so secure. So your wallet then takes this private key and using ECDSA, elliptic curve algorithm, it generates a public key. And from there, there's a couple other hashing and encoding steps that generate your Bitcoin address that you receive funds at. Now, it's important to note that this is a one-way process, so you can't take an address and go back to a private key. But when you create a Bitcoin transaction, you use your private key for what's called a digital signature to prove that you own uh, the Bitcoin in your wallet without having to actually provide that private key. But that's what a wallet fundamentally is. It's just a collection of private keys uh, that can be used to generate your receiving addresses. Now, what is a brain wallet? Well, remember that I said a private key is simply a 256-bit number. Well, it turns out if you run any data through the SHA-256 hashing algorithm, you get a 256-bit number. So SHA is a special hashing algorithm, which, is a, which means a one-way function that is uh, also deterministic. So anytime you put some data through this hashing algorithm, you can't go back uh, to that original data if you have the output. And also, any time that you put that input into the hash algorithm, you always get the same uh, number back out of it. So if I put uh, the string hello through SHA-256, I always get the same output. And if all I have is that hash, I can't go backwards to hello. So that's what SHA is. And what people discovered is they could simply come up with their own passphrases, simply like you would have a password or passphrase for an online account or for logging into your computer. They would take that passphrase and simply write it down and memorize it. But what they would do is they would run that passphrase through SHA-256 and use that as a private key for a Bitcoin wallet. So they could take that private key and import it into a wallet uh, or create a paper wallet with it, most likely. And uh, you would go through the normal algorithm to generate a receiving address and send Bitcoins uh, to that address. So you would come up with your passphrase, derive the private key using SHA-256, and generate the address, and then you had a wallet that you could even just keep in your head and send funds to. Now, that seems like a pretty nice idea. So, you know, dealing with private keys, they're pretty unwieldy, right? It's not easy to write down and store and certainly not to memorize gigantic 256-bit keys. Uh, so the idea of coming up with a simple passphrase that you could write down and memorize seems like it would be pretty smart. But here's the problem with this. Human beings are actually really terrible at coming up with entropy or randomness. If you have a truly randomly generated Bitcoin private key, this 256-bit number, because that key space is so large, it is impossible to brute force guess a properly generated private key. I've talked about this in previous tutorial videos, like the one about why you can't brute force Bitcoin private keys. 
there's simply too many numbers to go through, uh, and there's simply not enough computing power or time in the world to guess these keys. But the problem is, when a private key is generated from a source that is not cryptographically secure randomness, it can become much, much easier to actually brute force guess what that key is. It's very important when it comes to any cryptographic private keys that they're generated using a true random number generator. So how did we discover that this was such a huge problem? A great security researcher named Ryan Castellucci gave a DEF CON talk in 2014 on this topic. He actually built his own tool called Brain Flayer that was designed to find and crack these brain wallets for research purposes only. So he found that there are actually tons of these brain wallets out there, and many of them that would even seem like they had secure passphrases have been hacked and had the Bitcoins completely emptied out of those addresses. There's actually a few groups of hackers out there that compete using their own custom and very fast software to steal brain wallets. So they generate these large word lists from things like movies and books and TV shows uh, and you know common passphrases that people use, and they simply guess because these you know these word lists and things uh, these are not really truly random private keys. There are these brain wallets that don't have enough entropy. So for example, the empty string uh, used as a brain wallet actually has had over 59 Bitcoin in it uh, that were subsequently stolen, which is a ton of money. Uh, even a passphrase that might seem like it's kind of random and would be long enough to be secure maybe in a password context can easily be cracked by a brain wallet tool and have all the Bitcoin stolen. Uh, one interior crocodile alligator had uh, 0.001 Bitcoin stolen from it uh, over time. And so it's really important to remember that these brain wallets are not secure. Even if you think you're just throwing darts at a wall and picking your favorite movie quotes and, and mixing words around, you as a human being are not a good enough source of randomness to generate your own private keys. So how do we solve this problem of brain wallets being insecure? Well, in terms of brain wallets, the solution is simple. Don't use them. They're fundamentally insecure. Uh, no matter how smart you think you are at coming up with a secure passphrase, chances are pretty good with, that somebody with a decent amount of computing power and time on their hands can and will steal your Bitcoin. Really, you can think of the Bitcoin blockchain as a publicly available password database dump, and there's a juicy reward of money if somebody is able to crack this wallet. So don't use brain wallets. Now, if you're worried about properly backing up your private keys and you want a way to do so that's easy and secure, use mnemonics instead. Most modern wallets, when you create them, will generate a mnemonic seed phrase for you. So if you've been in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in recent years, uh, you're, you've probably seen this. You've probably used a mnemonic. This is generally a 12 to 24 English word backup phrase. And what makes this different from a brain wallet is the mnemonic is not actually uh, words that are chosen at random. Mnemonics are an encoding of a truly randomly generated seed key. So your wallet will generate 128 to 256 bits of entropy using a proper cryptographically secure random number generator, and then take that randomness and run it through an algorithm to encode it as words. So uh, encoding the seed phrase's words makes it much easier to write down or even memorize, but it's coming from a seed phrase that is cryptographically secure. Again, this is different from trying to randomly choose your own words, maybe from your favorite book or something. This is taking real, true, cryptographically secure randomness and encoding it in an easy-to-remember format. So again, don't use brain wallets. Use mnemonics instead. This is the modern, well-supported, and secure way to easily remember uh, private keys for cryptocurrencies. So, as always, there is a written article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video. If you would like to learn more and you'd like to uh, read as a medium for your learning. As well, I have a new code project on the Chain Tutorials website and GitHub, and that project is called Pwned Wallet. And what that project does 
is it's a simple React app where you can plug in your own Brain Wallet seed phrase and it will run through the cryptography to generate your uh, private key from that Brain Wallet phrase, your public key and address, so you can see uh, what that would be. And then it uses a publicly available API to fetch blockchain data and see if that wallet has ever had money in it and if that money has been stolen. So you might be surprised. Try running through a couple passwords. Some of the wallets you know, have likely been emptied. They have likely had their Bitcoin funds stolen. Uh, even if the funds haven't been stolen yet and nobody has ever sent money to that brain wallet, don't be fooled into thinking that that passphrase is secure. If you sent Bitcoin to that brain wallet, it's likely only a matter of time until one of these hacking groups picks that up and steals the money in there. But I think it's a neat tool that you can play around with so you can check out that code uh, again on the Chain Tutorials website and GitHub and see for yourself how the process of generating a brain wallet works. So again, as always, I wanna thank you all very much for listening. I hope you're staying safe and healthy through this difficult time and continuing to learn and do things that you're passionate about.